Hi, submarine friends. Well, I'm happy to report I got my two big rings welded in. You can see the burn through on this side. This is very good practice for position welding. The thing is, it doesn't have to be the world's most spectacular weld. In fact, you could glue those things in and they would do their job. I still like to weld them on both sides all the way around, but it's not 100% full penetration weld, it's just a fillet weld on each side. So that's done. So now, in between uh, welding, so what I do is I weld for about 10 minutes, then I let my welder cool down, because it only has a 60% duty cycle. So while it's cooling down, I cut out pieces. Which brings me to another point, I have a question for everybody, but let me finish this first. So this, it's called a doubler plate. Remember I said you have to put two times as much steel back supporting a hole in a vessel. So this increases the weight that's supporting that opening now. So again, it's called a doubler plate. They're not allowed anymore according to the American Bureau of Shipping who regulates submarine construction. It's an unfounded decision. There's no reason for it. Their concern is corrosion in between the two layers. Okay, so it's going to corrode right off the bat, but it's going to stop right away because the oxygen is going to be used up in the corrosion. So you need oxygen to support corrosion and there's no oxygen in there. As long as you do at least two passes on the weld, it's going to be uh, watertight. No water is going to get in there. So anyways, I'm 100% comfortable, as are most submarine builders, to do the doubler plate. So, on to my question. While I'm cutting out all these pieces for the future parts of the submarine, I'm cutting out the bottom plate that goes inside the hull to create a keel cooler. So, the water is on this side of the hull, the lake water, and on the other side of the hull is a chamber which holds the antifreeze coolant and the contact between the coolant water and the hull cools the coolant water. So that's how you cool the engine. My question is to anybody who has experience with this sort of thing, can I just have a 5 eighths of an inch or rather a half inch gap between the inner and the outer layer? The internet says a minimum of one and a half inches of gap and for the horsepower that I'm using, I need about nine square feet. So I would like to cut that gap down just for fabrication purposes. It's much cheaper and easier for me to just cut a slice of this material to use as a, as a wall, so to speak. And then I'll cut another one of these plates to go inside. I'm, in other words, I'm recycling all the steel from this vessel and I need the weight. So the heavier, the heavier material I use, the better. It just means less ballast weight I have to end at the or add at the end of the day. So let me know what you think. Is a half inch gap sufficient? I mean, a radiator has little teeny tiny gaps, and it's the it's the contact between water and steel that does the cooling. I don't believe it's the volume of water that helps, but I don't know. So I need some help deciding that, and I need to know soon. Because this weekend I'll probably start fabricating that because it goes in the back, sorry, it goes in the front so it doesn't really matter actually. I want it in the front because it's a nice heat source. This submarine is going to be used a lot in the winter time when it's minus 5, minus 10 degrees Celsius and the lake water is cold. So by having that keel cooler up front where the passenger is sitting, It'll radiate heat into the, into the occupant space and uh, give us a heat source and it'll hold a lot of heat. So that's the plan. So let me know what you think. Ciao.